What's up everyone? What you are about to see is a demonstration of the 1911 ignition system through a full cycle of fire. This was in the middle of a longer video about sear spring adjustment that I just uploaded, but I thought this was a really cool and valuable demonstration, so I wanted to make it into a separate, shorter video. I hope you enjoy and learn something. I designed and 3D printed this fixture that holds all the other components close to where they would be in the pistol around the sear and the hammer in this little jig right here. I've also made a representation of the slide. The main spring is further away from the hammer strut to reduce spring force. Not a lot is needed for this demonstration. This main spring would normally be, you know, compressed in the main spring housing and then moved closer up to the hammer strut. I will link to a couple of good 3D animations and a really cool video showing a classic teaching tool for 1911 gunsmiths and armorers in the description as well, but I wanted to demonstrate this with the actual components from a pistol. In the cocked position, the hammer strut has compressed the mainspring. The left sear spring tang has pivoted the sear tip into engagement with the hammer hooks and is holding it in the cocked position against the force from that compressed mainspring that is trying to pivot the hammer forward. The disconnector is being pushed up by the center tang of the sear spring into the disconnector pocket in the bottom of the slide, which is over the disconnector tip when the slide is in battery. It is also pushing the disconnector forward into the back of the trigger bow. You can see at this point the disconnector is not contacting the sear legs. Right now, the grip safety is blocking the trigger bow from traveling rearward. Gripping the pistol disengages the grip safety and allows that trigger bow to move rearward all the way. I'm going to get the grip safety out of our way now. I will put my finger on the trigger and press through the take up to the wall. The trigger bow pivots the disconnector back into contact with the sear legs against the force from only the center spring tang. As we pull through the wall and break the trigger, the trigger bow pushes on the disconnector which pushes on the sear legs and pivots the tip of the sear out from under the hammer hooks, releasing the hammer. It pivots forward with force provided by the mainspring, hits the firing pin, and fires the round. The slide starts coming rearward. It pivots the hammer back and it pushes the disconnector down as the tip of the disconnector comes out of the front of the pocket in the slide. This pushes the disconnector base down under the sear legs. Even though we are holding the trigger to the rear, this disconnects the trigger bow from the sear and allows the left sear spring tang to pivot the sear tip into the hammer, which catches the hammer hooks as the hammer is reset by the slide moving over the top of it. Now the sear is engaged with the hammer hooks. The hammer is cocked again and the slide has gone back forward into battery. The pocket in the slide is once again over the disconnector. As I let my finger off the trigger, the middle tang of the sear spring pushes the disconnector and trigger bar forward. As soon as the disconnector clears the front edge of the sear legs, the middle spring tang forces it back up into the pocket in the slide and the base into position in front of the sear legs. Letting my finger all the way off the trigger, a gap once again opens up between the disconnector and sear legs and the whole cycle can restart with the next shot. Let's look at the whole sequence a couple of times uninterrupted. 